All warriors understand the need to face and defeat the enemy. Both aspects of the task can be challenging. Both can require thought, insight, and planning. But a warrior may forget that even the task of identifying the enemy can be difficult. And the cost of that failure can lead to catastrophe. Our myths of the Republic speak of two groups of beings with such powers. The Jedi. And the Sith. But the Sith are reputed to be clever and capable warriors. The Emperor's wrath is coming. Who is the Emperor's wrath? A Sith Lord? Ghost. Wrath incarnate. Even the Dark Council fears him. Punished for my crimes. How do you wish to die? Combat? Or on your knees? I must admit. Mysteries of the Force are an enigma to me. But for all those abilities, all the power, the Jedi lacked the vision for how to wield it. I am a warrior. A warrior may retreat. He does not flee. He may lie in ambush. He does not hide. He may experience victory or defeat. He does not cease to serve. A warrior's end requires a worthy foe. To die in battle, dragging many foes into the void. That is a good ending.
Okay, now let me think back to my time in Sleepy Hollow. What was that damn plan we were working on? It was a lucrative money investment, where we would have the suppliers gather the resources for the trade merchants and pay them three quarters their earnings on their goods and invest the other quarter into the trade merchants' route and ensure. The merchandise would reach their destinations, promising them a quarter of the trade merchant earnings to substitute the quarter invested from their supply earnings and keeping a non-negotiable 5% of the merchant revenue for our own services. The deal would obviously be within the supplier's favor, as the quarter earnings of the trade merchant route would far exceed their supply revenue's quarter revenue investment. The lucrative part was that we would do the same thing with the merchant traders as well, investing a portion of their earnings into the supply and demand chain and ensuring the non-negotiable 5%. From them too, then, we would climb the food chain going from shipping merchants to plantation trade merchants until the entire chain of the world's commerce was paying us a percentage of all their earnings for. Basically doing the business they were already doing, the best part was we never invested a single pittance of a shilling of our own money through all this. It was all paid for with their money. The most we changed, other than our ability to influence their trading partners, was that we supplied protection to ensure the merchandise got from point A to point B and we would funnel all the revenue into a single commerce guild and banking depository. I think that was the overall plan, if I remember correctly. I do remember that we met in secret many nights going over over this plan and working out all the details and problems we might run into. We never expected the head of our order to have turned on us the way they did though. Then again we never expected the Pope or the King of England to be running the order at that time. We had all thought they were supposed to just be pawns in the Grand Master's Malefactorium, so we were surprised to say the least in the manner of our betrayal. Of course I find it quite interesting how in these modern times I can look back and discover the elaborate fairy tale that spawned from our grisly demise. To think that the Grand Inquisitor of the Colonial States had fallen to treachery by his own order, tried and executed for being in league with the devil, after burning dozens of innocent women who were just pawns being used to hide the secrets of thieves hiding behind noble cusses, and then buried under the pretenses of having been the devil himself. Then, becoming the villain like devil in a story tale written by the inspiration of these lies, to becoming the character known as the Headless Horseman. Then out of the irony of it all, through no association, in the next life I end up becoming Lucifer himself. It truly makes me wonder, were they mocking me out of parody and a cruel sense of humor, or was there something more, something more sinister going on? I also remember that this isn't the first time people have come together round someone at the moment of their demise chanting accusations of them being the devil. Well, I'm glad to have hurled their roller coaster of schemes off the tracks and into the flames of chaos and uncontrolled disorder. When the chips are down, these, uh, these civilized people, they'll eat each other. You are the unvaccinated. You are the problem. It is the unvaccinated who are the problem, period, end of story. The only people that you can blame, the only people you can blame, this isn't shaming, this is the truth, maybe they should be shamed, are the unvaccinated. It's time to start blaming the unvaccinated folks, not the regular folks. Anyone you came into contact with will blame you, as will the rest of us who have done the right thing by getting vaccinated. Because frankly, we know that we can't trust the unvaccinated. I think it's time to get our moral house in order, Anderson. It's the unvaccinated who are the threat. All those vaccinated folks are going to start wearing masks to protect the unvaccinated folks. It's called a Christian value. You're basically punishing the vaccinated uh, for the the sins of the unvaccinated. People are not behaving honorably. The unvaccinated are basically saying, well, it's open season for me. I can do whatever I want as well. The, the unvaccinated are basically beating their breasts and running around the country saying, ha ha, we don't care, we're living free and so forth. We've been patient, but our patience is wearing thin. The unvaccinated, a group that includes children and people acting like children. <laughs> 
and the rest of us are starting to get pissed off. The vaccinated feel the unvaccinated are making me upset or angry. This is not about freedom or personal choice. Well, my freedom is being kind of disturbed here. No, screw your freedom. The other day, Howard Stern weighed in with a much different approach. Take a look. <laughs> when are we going to stop putting up with the idiots in this country and just say you now it's mandatory to get vaccinated? Their freedom. But you're treading on our freedom and you're making other people sick and really you're killing other people. The anti-vaxxers, they seem to have a thing for death and home remedies. The anti-maskers turned anti-vaxxers are not just putting their own lives at risk. If that was the issue, we could just say that we can watch them compete to win place or show in the Darwin Awards. We have to start doing things for the greater good of society and not for idiots who think that they can do their own research. And don't get me started on the lunatics who won't take any of the COVID vaccines. Life is too short to be an ass. Life is way too short to be ignorant of the promise of something that is helping people worldwide. Maybe you're doing it because um, you're, you're disconnected or disorganized. Maybe you have some sympathetic psychological reasons. But maybe you're just being antisocial. Oh, you can't shame them. You can't call them stupid. You can't call them silly. Yes, they are. Those who are not vaccinated will end up paying the price. The unvaccinated should be taxed. Uh, they should pay more for health care. We need to start looking at the choice to remain unvaccinated the same as we look at driving while intoxicated. We're going to see, and I've said, almost mm -hmm. two types of America. Dr. Fauci said that if hospitals get any more overcrowded, they're going to have to make some very tough choices about who gets an ICU bed. I don't, that choice doesn't seem so tough to me. Vaccinated person having a heart attack? Yes, come right on in. We'll take care of you. Unvaccinated guy who gobbled horse goo. Rest in peace, Wheezy. Pointing back to the unvaccinated who are really creating a problem in this country, every death that we are seeing from COVID could have been prevented. Literally, the only people dying are the unvaccinated. And for those of you spreading misinformation...